So my name is Franco. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you very much to be here. First of all, I beg your pardon uh, for my old and slow English. Yes, you must know that when I was young, I went to Stratford upon Avon in England, just the place where Shakespeare was born, you know, and I, mm, I could speak a quite good English, uh, but then I married a, a German girl, now a woman, and, uh, and this girl learned me German, and I, German is a very difficult language, eh? and so I forgot my English like once. But anyway, I can explain what I want to explain about Dante to you, but then I will act, I will play in Italian, because this is my philosophy, eh? that Dante is a theater man, and it must, must be heard, it is, must be heard in Italian. And you will hear, uh, really, uh, a canto, a song, uh, because uh, this text, uh, the, the title is not divine comedy, it's comedy, commedia. Dante never wrote divina commedia. Uh, others put this <laughs> divina commedia, but don't, not Dante. And uh, what does this commedia mean? Uh, it means uh, tragedia a lieto fine, a tragedy with a glorious ending, because it is a tragedy, you know? And uh, tragical will be uh, the history of Paolo and Francesca. Tragical is the history of uh, Ulysses. And uh, Ulysses is the most important character of the Divine Comedy. And uh, uh, there is a kind of identification from Dante into Ulysses. And he will be the real Ulysse, Ulysses of this great journey. And when he will find uh, uh, Beatrice, and this Beatrice will be a little bit uh, his uh, Penelope, uh, the woman of, of Ulysses. And uh, um, so I will speak to you, I will speak to you about uh, this uh, text, and this great poem, this great poet, and then I will act the Canto Quinto, Paolo e Francesca, Canto Ventiseiesimo, Ulysses, and uh, at the end, the Paradise, the last verses of Paradise, um, just at the end, l'amor che muove il sole l'altre stelle. Um, uh, l'amor, l'amor is love. Love is the uh, really the undertext and overtext of the commedia. Dante is. Um, for Dante, uni universe is love, but it's very, 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 very difficult to arrive to this love, you know? So we will uh, uh, see in this uh, first uh, canto, Paolo e Francesca, a sensuality, a sensual love. In Ulysses canto, we will see a love for knowledge, so philosophy. Love for knowledge, and at the end, the universal, the God loves. Um, but let's say something about uh, the double, the double uh, character of Dante. I mean that in the Commedia there are two Dante. Dante as poet, and Dante as a character. He begins the first famous Nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita, our life, in the middle of our life, mi ritrovai in una selva per una selva oscura. So, uh, um, ancient poet like uh, Homer, or uh, Virgil, 
who is the master of Dante, uh, they took other characters, for example, Ulysses for Homer, or Enea for, uh, for Virgil. But for Dante, for the first time, he is the character. And this is <coughs> really a situation of existentialism. It's already existentialism. And here be begins existentialism, the philosophies of existentialism, with Heidegger, Jasper, and my master Gadamer. But in Inferno, Canto Quinto, the first canto we will see now, here begins the Romantism. You know, it's not from uh, Romeo and Juliet of Shakespeare or many other uh, romantic poets of 19th century. Here begins the Romantism, for what I think. Because this is really a great love, uh, a great impossible love. Well, Dante is, uh, for the first time, in the hell. And this is the first uh, moment where he sees two souls together. They are Paolo and Francesca. And uh, he calls them, and Francesca comes. Oh, animal grazioso e benigno, you see? Oh, animal, uh, Francesca uh, is, is, very, uh, is very happy to find him, Dante. You are visiting here. Uh, I will speak about us in this moment. And uh, she speaks about uh, 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 the great love for Paolo, who is the uh, brother of his husband, whose name was Gianciotto, a very ugly man. This Paolo was wonderful. And uh, so, this is the most famous uh, terzina. You know, the commedia, you see, three endecasyllables. They are called terzine. Amor calcor gentil ratto s'apprende, Amor che nullo amato amar perdona, e amor condusse noi ad una morte. Ecco. This is the famous terzina uh, with this, uh, which he repeats this uh, amor, amor, amor. And uh, Dante is... Uh, uh, had a moment of uh, great, uh, astonishing. Uh, then uh, uh, speaks with to Francesca, but tell me, Francesca, i tuoi martiri a lagrimar mi fanno tristo e pio. You see, verse mm, 115. But he wants to know something more. Ma dimmi al tempo... A che e come concedette amore che conosceste i dubbiosi desiri? Uh, he wants to know how uh, they began this, this great love. And so Francesca, Francesca um, told him that they were reading a famous book about Lancelot and Ginevra. So they read this book, and together, noi eh, leggiavamo un giorno per diletto di Lancialotto come amor lo strinse. Sole eravamo e salsa. They were reading, but at the moment in which uh, Lancialotto kissed, kissed Ginevra, quando leggemmo il disiato riso, riso means mouth when he smiles before kissing, you know, <laughs> uh, in this moment, uh, he kissed me, and here began the 
tragedy because Gianciotto killed them. And uh, so Dante is very, 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 mm, cannot, uh, cannot remain uh, in this moment, uh, uh, don't know what to do. It, he doesn't, does not what to do. He, he is going to, to, uh, to fall into the heart. And so I, you can, if you want to read in many translations in English, in other languages, but I think that it's very important to hear now in Italian. And this is for the three cantos. And then if you want at the end to ex ask me something in Italian or in English, uh, you can ask whatever you want. Oh, animal grazioso e benigno, che visitando vai per l'aere perso noi che tignemmo il mondo di sanguigno. Se fosse amico il re dell'universo, noi chiederemmo lui della tua pace, poiché hai pietà del nostro mal perverso. Di quel che udire e che parlar vi piace, noi udiremo e parleremo a voi, mentre che il vento come fa? Ci tace. Siede la terra dove nata fui, sulla marina dove il Po discende per aver pace con seguaci sui. Amor, dal cor gentil ratto s'apprende prese costui della bella persona che mi fu tolta, il modo ancor m'offende. Amor canullo amato amar perdona, mi prese del costui piacersi forte che come vedi ancor non m'abbandona. Amor condusse noi ad una morte. Caina attende chi a vita ci spense. Queste parole da lor ci for porte, quando intesi quell'anima offense. Chi n'ha il viso e tanto il tendi basso, finché il poeta mi disse, che pense? Quando risposi cominciai, io oh, lasso, quanti dolci pensier, quanto disio menò costoro al doloroso passo. Poi mi rivolsi a loro e parlai io, e cominciai, Francesca, i tuoi martiri a lagrimar mi fanno tristo e pio, ma dimmi, al tempo di dolci sospiri, a che come concedette amore che conosceste i dubbiosi disiri, e quella me, nessun maggior dolore che ricordarsi del tempo felice nella miseria e ciò, sa il tuo dottore, ma se conoscer la prima radice del nostro amor tu hai cotanto affetto, dirò come colui che piange e dice. Noi leggiavamo un giorno per diletto, di lancialotto come amor lo strinse, soli eravamo e senza alcun sospetto, per più fiate gli occhi ci sospinse quella lettura e scoloròci il viso, ma solo un punto fu quel che ci vinse. Quando leggemmo il disiato riso, esser baciato da cotanto amante, questi che mai da me non fia diviso, la bocca mi baciò tutto tremante. Galeotto fu il libro e chi lo scrisse, quel giorno più non vi leggemmo avante. Mentre che l'uno spirito questo disse, l'altro piangea, sì che di pietade io venni men così com'io morisse e caddi come corpo morto cade. Thank you. Thank you very much. You uh, understand this uh, 
Kissing is really a universal language. Eh? <laughs> um, so uh, Dante uh, here created for what I think romanticism. Here is the uh, yes the the moment in which is born romanticism. Well, this is a. Uh, um, a famous, very famous canto. Um, now I will, uh, I will explain and then play Ulysses' canto. Anyway, I wanted just to say something about uh, a universal uh, poetry of Dante. And uh, uh, you see, this is the first time I act Dante in India. And in uh, three cantos, Dante wrote about India. In the hell, canto number 14, uh, he wrote about Alexander the Great when he, he came to India. And uh, it's a very, very, very beautiful moment. And then, canto number 26 on Purgatory. He wrote about the connection from Ethiopia and India. Indo o Ethiopo. Uh, then in canto number 19 of Paradise, this is the most important, because um, he's a Christian poet, you know, the most important Christian poet, but he criticized so much uh, the Pope of his time and many others uh, uh, Christian men m but not Christian in the interior and uh, uh, he uh, wrote uh, perhaps he <laughs> at that time a man who lived in India couldn't know anything about Jesus Christ so he wrote uh, perhaps there are in India many persons, men and women, who doesn't, don't know anything about Jesus Christ, but they are much more Christian than many Christians of Rome, or, you know. And this is very important for, uh, the, the, for understanding the universal theme of Dante. Well, this uh, second canto, Ulysses. He is, uh, um, I told you, there is a certain identification because Dante uh, wants to know. is a great poet, but is a great philosopher in the same time, and is a great dramaturg. Because, uh, really, this commedia has moments, very dramatic moments, Sometimes also comics uh, in Purgatory, and um, and so is a masterpiece on poetry, philosophy, and theater. Um, you see, Lo Maggior Corno della Fiamma Antica. There are two uh, persons, Ulysses and Diomede, but. But also here, like in Paolo Francesca, we'll speak only Ulysses. So he uh, spoke about uh, the great adventure. And this is not in Homer, the great poet, ancient Greek poet. And Dante took this character of Ulysses just for another interpretation. And he wants to go after the Mediterranean Sea, the Middle Sea, uh, into the ocean, the great ocean. And it's true that Dante, in this canto, anticipates um, discovering of America, who comes uh, two centuries, uh, he is uh, two centuries uh, before. And uh, so, quando mi dipartì da Circe, 
famous church. Uh, and uh, he didn't want to remain with uh, the son, né dolcezza di figlio, né la pietà del vecchio padre, né il debito amore, lo qual dovea Penelope far lieta. You see, in number 94. And uh, uh, he didn't want to remain with the family, but together with other friends, ma misi me per l'alto mare aperto, alto mare aperto is the ocean, and uh, with a little ship. And uh, so he saw everything of this uh, Mediterranean Sea, Spain, Morocco, uh, Sardinia, and so he wrote also this important, Io e i compagni eravamo vecchi e tardi, like me, eh? old and slow. <laughs> but, <laughs> but is important, is not a, a, a young character. When I was young, I played Romeo, uh, Hamlet, and these uh, young characters. Also, a famous Italian poet, you know, Giacomo Leopardi. Well, this is a young poet, always young. Other, mm, other poets, like Pasolini, Gozzano, Italian, they are young. Uh, Dante is not young. Dante is an old and slow, but still energetic. And so, uh, he went there, and now, uh, Dalla Mandestra mi lasciai Siviglia, Siviglia is uh, Siviglia in, the, in Spain, Dall'altra già me l'aveva lasciata Setta is Ceuta in Morocco. And then he speaks to the, uh, the brothers and the companions, O frati, brothers, dissi, che per cento miglia perigli, ecco, we are now um, old. <laughs> What can we do? Eh, we must go there. Eh? <laughs> Nothing to do. We must absolutely uh, go there because the famous uh, Terzina, considerate la vostra semenza. You must consider your essential uh, nature. Fatti non foste a vivere come bruti, ma per seguir virtute e canoscenza. You must be philosopher. You must be uh, uh, human in this way. So, companions are, they are agree with Dante, but there is a moment in which it seems to be possible to, to get there, But then God didn't want. <laughs> eh, quando ne apparve una montagna bruna per la distanza, this montagna, montagna is, uh, is a mountain, bruna means a wild, great mountain. And, and this is the purgatory. And Dante will go to the purgatory, but not for this way, for another way, together with Virgil. So Dante, at the end, is the same uh, character of Ulysses, but he, go for another, he goes for another uh, great way, together with Virgilio. So noi ci allegammo e tosto tornò in pianto che della nuova terra un turbo nacque, great tsunami eh, was born, e percosse del legno e this tsunami eh, eh, was terrible and the tragic death of Ulysses. But it's not uh, the spirit of Ulysses remains for Dante. Lo maggior corno della fiamma antica cominciò a crollarsi mormorando, pur come quella a cui vento a fatica, indi la cima, qua e là menando, come fosse la lingua che parlasse, gittò voce di fuori e disse, 
Quando mi dipartì da Circe, che sottrasse me più d'un anno là, presso a Gaeta, prima che si Enea la nomasse, né dolcezza di figlio, né la pietà del vecchio padre, né il debito amore lo qual dovea Penelope far lieta, vincer potero dentro a me l'ardore che io ebbi a divenir del mondo esperto e degli vizi umani e del valore, ma misi me per l'alto mare aperto, sol con un legno e con quella compagna picciola dalla qual non pui diserto. L'un lito e l'altro vidi infin la Spagna, fin nel Morrocco e l'isola di Sardi, e l'altre che quel mare intorno bagna. Io e compagni eravamo vecchi e tardi, quando venimmo a quella foce stretta dove Ercule segnò i suoi riguardi a ciò che l'uomo più oltre non si metta. Dalla mandestra mi lasciai Siviglia, dall'altra già mi aveva lasciata setta. O oh, frati! dissi, che per cento miglia perigli siete giunti all'Occidente, a questa tanto picciola vigilia di nostri sensi che del rimanente. Non vogliate negar l'esperienza di retro al sol del mondo senza gente, considerate la vostra semenza, fatti non posta a vivere come bruti, ma perseguir virtù e canoscenza. I miei compagni feci osi aguti con questa orazione picciola al cammino che appena poscia li avrei ritenuti e volta a nostra poppa nel mattino Direi mi facemmo ali al folle volo, sempre acquistando dal lato mancino tutte le stelle già dell'altro polo vede la notte il nostro tanto basso che non surgea fuor del marin suolo cinque volte era acceso e tante casso, lo lume era di sotto della luna, poi chi entrati eravamo nell'alto passo, quando n'apparve una montagna bruna per la distanza e parve di alta tanto quanto veduta non aveva alcuna, noi ci allegrammo e tosto tornò in pianto, che della nuova terra un turbo nacque e percosse del legno il primo canto, tre volte il fe girar con tutte l'acqua e alla quarta levar la poppa in su. So, e la prora ire in giù, come altrui piacque, infinché il mar fu sopra noi richiuso. Thank you. Thank you very much. You hear that is really yes, uh, a little bit a music, you know, is Italian and many of yours perhaps didn't understand, but at, at the end is also music. <laughs> this is very important. And it's po important to say that uh, this kind of playing must not be um, uh, uh, a, a normal playing, um, but uh, it is absolutely um, very important to follow this kind of verse. This kind of verse whose name is a endecasyllable. You know what is a, an endecasyllable? Is a verse uh, that has absolutely the last accent on the tenth, has not eleven syllables, but the last accent on the tenth, 
per esempio, nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita. This is a normal and a syllable. But if I say, for example, e di Rachele, per cui tanto fe, you see, only ten syllable, but the last one is with accent. So is an endecasyllable, we say in Italian tronco. It is in the casillabo tronco with only ten. In case of more than eleven, for example, ora ci importa l'un dei duri margini, twelve, but you see, always on the tenth. And this kind of decasyllable, such an decasyllable is called sdrucciolo, more than eleven. But there is a, a great problem, because uh, ten years ago, when I began this great project, and uh, let me tell you that not only on books, but only in theatre, in Rome, in Italy, and all over the world, uh, I went to uh, act Dante. Uh, well, I guess that none of my great master, Ronconi, Labia, Eduardo de Filippo, told me what was uh, an endecasyllable. And so I had to uh, study it uh, with myself. And after one year, one half year, I understood that Dante had a great method. He didn't wrote the comedy, the commedia. He composed the commedia. He took uh, a kind of, uh, um, what's the name in English for pentagramma, like the music, uh, you know, uh, pentagramma, and with the metrical figures, in Italian are called sinalefe, dialefe, uh, sineresi, dieresi, and then the enjambement. And he created a new method for himself. And if you follow this method, uh, last accent will be always on the tenth. And this is the metrical time you have to... to uh, understand in acting. Um, for example, many uh, actors before me, believe me, is so, pronounced the famous uh, verse number 13 of First Canto of Purgatory, and the famous poet, uh, Argentinian poet Jorge Luis Borges, said that is the most beautiful verse of all the Divine Comedy, this dolce color d'oriental zaffiro. I say it because Oriente, the East, is very important for Dante. Um, and if you hear other actors, you can click uh, also, uh, Sermonti, a great uh, um, interpreter, uh, Giancarlo Sbragia, a great actor, and they say it, dolce color d'oriental zaffiro. Now, dolce color d'oriental zaffiro, you see, is on the ninth. This is not indecisible. Such a case, Dante put a dieresis, a umlaut, on the word oriental. So it's not oriental, but dolce color d'oriental zaffiro. You hear this oriental, oriental with four syllables, is another meaning. So is the sound that explains what does this poetry mean. Uh, also uh, in the verse that came after that, faceva tutto rider l'oriente, faceva tutto. To reader l'oriente is an index syllable only if you put this umlaut on the word oriente or oriental. Um, because Dante as a character 
uh, is searching, is uh, looking for this East, that is very important in the Purgatory, at the beginning. So, Oriente. In other cases, it's the opposite. If you have the Sinalefe, uh, if I say, for example, O Muse, O Alto Ingegno, Or Maiutate, this is not a verse. This is what mm, we call prosa. And you must, uh, O Muse, O Alto Ingegno, Or Maiutate, 13. You must follow this Sinalefe. O muse o alto ingegno or maiutate. This is a verse. Before was prosa. So you have to make a great, great work on each verse if you want really to, uh, um, to give the real uh, meaning of this oral text. So let's go on and then you uh, can ask me something. Uh, let's uh, see the last uh, verses of the Commedia. O luce eterna. You know that all the canticas, uh, the last word of the three canticas is the word stelle, the stars. He's looking for the stars. And love is in the stars. At the end, he will say this amor, l'amor che muove il sole e l'altre stelle. And uh, here Dante uh, cannot understand himself. He is blind uh, with the, this light, but also by the eyes of Beatrice. But at the end, a great, great light uh, will teach him what he wanted to know. His visage he is into this light. O oh, luce eterna, che sola in te sidi, sola t'intendi e da te intelletta intendente te. Ami e arridi, quella circolazione che si concetta, pareva a me come lume riflesso dagli occhi miei al quanto circunspetta. Dietro da sé, del suo colore stesso mi parve pinta della nostra effigie perché il mio viso in lei tutto era messo. Qual è il geometra che tutto s'affige per ritrovar lo cerchio e non ritrova, pensando quel principio dell'indige. Tal era io a quella vista nova, veder voleva come si convenne l'imago al cerchio e come vi si indova. <ride> Ma non erano da ciò le proprie penne, se non che la mia mente fu percossa da un fulgore in che sua voglia venne all'alta fantasia qui mancò possa ma già volgeva il mio disio e il velle siccome rota chi ugualmente mossa l'amor che muove il sole e l'altre stelle. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, I'm very glad to, to be here to speak with you. And uh, now if you have some question, and um, I repeat, in English or in Italian, <laughs> In Spanish, in German, and if you want, uh, <laughs> whatever you want. Thank you very much. The microphone is there. Do you have any recommendations for an English translation of the Divine Comedy? 
uh, there are many, many translations, um, but um, yes, there is one. I can't remember the name of the, mm, the poet. Anyway, is a translation in which uh, there are always the, the same uh, uh, rhyme uh, is the only one. You can look in for that. Yes. But it's very important also to, to understand the meaning and then try, if you are interested in Italian language, to, 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 to hear in Italian something. Because they yes, have yes, the, the yes. structure of the words in English don't, yes, yes, yes. don't have the uh, they have the accent at the end, at while the end. we have the the words are mostly yes. plain, flat. So well, that's uh, yes. <laughs> it's very difficult to maintain the yes, same and like a syllable, <laughs> like in Shakespeare, I, <laughs> like in Shakespeare, like ten like syllable Shakespeare, lines. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. So I don't know how they can they can. Any, keep anyway, we have many uh, Shakespearean translation in Italian, <laughs> late Italiano. <laughs> si, so Italiano. Ecco. Yes. We, we have many trans see, see, Italian okay. translation, and we can, so I think that also in, uh, in, uh, in case of um, uh, Dante into English, uh, I understand that uh, there is this problem. Anyway, it's, it's going it's to be translated, uh, and then with, uh, with um, the same translation, uh, you can read in Italian, exactly, and yes. so the, the meaning arrives, I think. Is really universal. Uh, talking about the, the, um, the cant of Paolo e Francesca, you said uh, that, of course, Dante uh, splits himself into yes, to, uh, yes. the, uh, the poet yes. and, uh, and, the and the human being. And um, so there is, on one side, there is uh, Dante the moralist yes. that, that puts them in, the, in, in, uh, in hell. Yes. On the other side, there is Dante, the human, with the, his, uh, his empathy for, uh, yes. for this tragedy. Yes. And uh, we can see that at the end, he faints. He only faints two times, I think, in, the, in all the, two or three times in all the, in all the comedy. <laughs> so, yes. so it's a very intense moment uh, that he lives uh, completely as a human yes, being. Yes, 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 yes. What, what do you think is prevalent? In your, in your opinion, what is prevalent in the, in, in the old Divine Comedy, but especially in this uh, canto? Is it Dante the moralist that uh, yes, condemns... It's a very good uh, question, but uh, I think that Dante really is Francesca because... Um, he let us see Francesca and in the same time the law of God uh, but uh, um, I think that is um, that is more for Francesca he's not a moralist yes. he's not at all a moralist he was a very luxurious man <laughs> also, eh? he said also in the canto 26 of Purgatory, where I look of Purgatory. And so I, when I uh, act this canto, I always say, um, Dante and all of us, we will be in this cerchio of Purgatory because we are saved. But some mm, little scene of luxury <laughs> we <laughs> can do. Last, last. And we like do. So, for Francesca is uh, the real tragedy. And uh, so I mm, speak about romantics because uh, love and death are together in this canto. So the ideal of love of, of and death, uh, the romantics, is uh, uh, really the, the, the meaning of this canto. Yes. Grazie. Um, I'll just say in Italian and then I translate it to you if it's okay. Eh, mi è piaciuto molto come <coughs> l'ha rappresentato, interpretato Grazie. questi tre canti. Eh, volevo chiederle se può fare un po' una, diciamo, un'escursione un po' storica eh, della, della commedia di Dante nel suo periodo storico perché è molto influenzata anche da quello che lui ha vissuto certo. ehm, penso che potrebbe essere un aiuto anche per 
eh, capire di più il perché anche lui ha scritto. And, uh, yeah, sorry, just to, uh, just was asking <laughs> Maestro Ronconi if he can just give us an overview of the political and historical moment in which Dante wrote the comedy, uh, because uh, it can help also to understand the reason behind it. I'd like so much to uh, answer in Italian this question, <laughs> because it's uh, very difficult anyway, I'll try to... to uh, you know what was the uh, most uh, important uh, historical for Dante mm, moment? He, he was banished from Florence. This is the problem. And uh, I repeat, the romantics of this man, for the eyes of Beatrice, but really eh, for the eyes of this uh, little woman that he knew in Florence, he, like uh, uh, he wrote in the Vita Nova, at the end of the Vita Nova, he had in 15 years, 15 years of banishment, wrote this uh, commedia. So, uh, believe me, is also, uh, all of this is naive, is very naive. I, when I was 15, 16 years, at, mm, for the first time I studied the Commedia, I, uh, I said to me, but look at this man who put into the hell all the enemies of him, <laughs> put in purgatory, mm, the man was a friend, uh, not friend, and in paradise, the great man, the great, uh, he will also eh, arrive into paradise. Eh? That this is very, very, very naive. Because, like Aristoteles said, great poetry is more philosophical and more high than history. Um, but Dante keep the history into this poem. And he is more philosophical and high than history. At the end, he becomes God, because he decided to whom... <laughs> so he uh, is re a certain responsibility, uh, a certain, uh, you know. Uh, anyway, is so great uh, and sublime that he arrived to, to do something so naive. This is the reason for uh, and the historical um, history that become poetry, becomes poetry. That's uh, Mr. wanted to... Just if you could please pass it. Ti ringrazio, maestro. I want to ask how popular is La Commedia in Italia at the moment amongst the various generations? Yes. Um, for all generations, there is a great problem, believe me, in our century. That, and th is the problem that I have overcome. Because when I wrote my books and when I um, act my theater on Dante, I spent the same time for hell, purgatory, and paradise. The problem is that uh, young people, uh, also not young people, uh, know mm, quite well the hell, inferno, <laughs> yes, uh, so and so paradise, and not at all the so and so purgatory <laughs> and not at all paradise. That's the real problem. And uh, but Dante says at the beginning of, of paradise, O voi che siete in piccioletta barca, uh, you are uh, you must follow me now with a great uh, you must understand this cantica. If you don't understand this cantica, this paradise, you will never understand me. And so many, many people, uh, also great uh, 
great poet like Leopardi said that paradise is not uh, the same in well of um, purgatory uh, of hell. And this is not true, absolutely. And it's very important to um, um, uh, understand the character of Dante if you want to um, understand the paradise. Because only there uh, Dante uh, is real what he uh, wants to be. Uh, he understands this um, concept of love. And so uh, this is the situation, and it's not a good situation because uh, also in this uh, anniversary uh, of um, 2021, so many, many, many people wrote books uh, and uh, performed uh, about uh, hell and a little bit purgatory, but no one for paradise. <laughs> Another question. Yeah, hi, good evening. My question was, uh, Dante, the character, as he moved through hell and purgatory along with his uh, partner Virgil, how did the relationship between the two evolve? Yes, it's very important, this uh, question. At the end, at the beginning, Dante is in despair, you know, uh, help me, oh my master, you are uh, tu sei lo mio maestro, il mio autore, help me, let me, and Virgilio will be his father, will be his father, at the beginning he falls and Virgilio uh, help him, eh? but mm, then Dante becomes a little bit starker, and I must tell you the truth, for mm, at the end of uh, canto number Seven, uh, 27 of Purgatory, Virgilio uh, is not there, and Dante only in the canto number 30 uh, uh, sees that Virgilio is not there. Oh, my father, he, he, he is weeping because, uh, and in this moment comes Beatrice, comes Beatrice, and mm, Dante, don't, uh, don't, uh, you must not weep now, don't, now I, well, I think that in, in this moment, Virgilio, who was the father, well, Dante, uh, I don't say he kills Virgilio, but it's, he must be uh, stronger <coughs> as Virgilio. Uh, like the son must be something more of his father. So this is the development of this. Uh, uh, he must be something more of his father. And Virgilio let that everything goes on. Thank you. Okay. If there are other questions... Uh, uh, you, uh, you've been working a lot also on Shakespeare. How was the relationship of uh, Shakespeare towards Dante? Well, I think uh, that um, at the beginning, Dante is uh, in second canto of Inferno, something like Hamlet, because he, all of you know the famous... Uh, to be or not to be, that is the question, huh? the, famous, the most famous monologue of Hamlet. And uh, the undiscovered land, uh, huh? mm, from then no travelers return, uh, you know? Well, so Hamlet remains here in the heart, to be or not to be, the doubt, doubt means to. Dante will go to this undiscovered land. And this is uh, really very, very hard for Dante, for Dante as character. And canto number two of Inferno is really uh, the possibility. Also because there is, yes, Virgilio, but then also Beatrice, Santa Lucia, and also Mary the Madonna, 
uh, that want the uh, they all want uh, that Dante goes so yeah, okay I go <laughs> but it's very 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 difficult for <laughs> for Dante so it's really uh, uh, anti Hamlet uh, the opposite of Hamlet perhaps is the same character in another because Hamlet is a very very religious character also uh, yes. Okay.